You've probably been hearing a lot about vibe coding lately, but what exactly is it? And why is everybody suddenly interested in it? In this video, I'll break down this new approach that's letting anybody build real working apps, oftentimes without writing a single line of code. I'll also explain how it works, what makes it different, and why it might just be the future of software development. So let's start with the basics. At its core, vibe coding is just a way to build software by describing what you want in plain English and letting AI sort of handle the code. The term was coined by Andre Karpathy, co-founder of OpenAI and former AI director at Tesla in February of 2025. He described it as a type of coding where, quote, you fully give in to the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget that the code even exists. So with vibe coding, instead of writing code in a programming language, you're quite literally just talking to an AI assistant. You might say, build a weather app that shows a five day forecast, and it will sort of just handle the rest for you from the design to the backend code and everything in between. Now, this is super appealing to people who think in terms of user experiences, not technical syntax. And it's also just absolutely perfect for that I wish this existed energy that many entrepreneurs and business owners have, but couldn't previously act on without quite a bit of coding knowledge. In fact, this shift is already happening. According to Y Combinator, about 25% of startups in their winter 2025 batch had code bases that were 95% AI generated. So yeah, this is quickly becoming the new normal. So let's take a closer look at how this all works and the different types of ways that you can implement a tool like this. People have already used vibe coding to build everything from productivity tools and small business dashboards to creative apps and learning platforms. So let's look at how this actually works in practice. I'll walk you through three different examples, each with different levels of complexity starting with something that we could probably all benefit from on a daily basis, a personal to-do list. I'm going to tell the AI, create a to-do app where I can add tasks, check them off, and see my progress. Make it clean and simple with a modern design. Now, watch as the AI creates the HTML structure, adds CSS styling, and it implements JavaScript functionality. In essentially no time at all, we have a fully working application. Okay, but I want to move on to something a bit more complex to really test it out. So I'll write in the next prompt, build a dashboard that takes CSV data and creates interactive charts, include options for bar charts, line graphs, and pie charts with customizable colors. And just like magic, Notice how the AI not only creates the interface, but also handles file processing, data parsing, and chart generation automatically. Finally, let's try something a little more creative to get a well-rounded view here. So let's ask it to create a simple space shooter game where I control a ship, shoot asteroids, and keep score. Add sound effects and particle effects for explosions. And as you can see, the AI is handling everything game mechanics, basic physics, even the visual and audio effects, all from a single prompt. It's tools like V0 from Vercel that we just saw, as well as Cursor's Composer, GitHub Copilot, Windsurf, Lovable, and so many more that make this all possible. If you're looking for a starting point, sites like Vibe Codex offer ready-to-use prompts for all kinds of apps, so you're not starting from a blank page. There's a ton of momentum in this space right now with new tools launching constantly and competition between platforms like PromptBase, Prompt Hero, and PseudoWrite is actually speeding up how fast these systems are able to improve both in what they can actually build, but also in how easy they are to use. Now that we've seen what vibe coding can do, let's compare it to traditional development and break down the biggest differences. First, there's speed and accessibility. Traditional coding takes time. You'll need to learn programming languages. You'll need to understand syntax and you'll need to get comfortable with debugging. And usually you'll have to build up years of experience. As mentioned, vibe coding skips all of that, meaning that you can go from idea to working app in a matter of hours. Some recent industry reports even show that AI assisted development can speed up certain tasks by 50% or more. Next, there's the learning curve. So traditional coding can be pretty tough to get into since you'll need to learn multiple languages, frameworks, and tools, each with its own sort of quirks and rules. 
it's a lot to take in, especially if you're starting from scratch. Vibe coding, on the other hand, shifts the learning curve. So instead of memorizing syntax, the focus is on learning how to write clear prompts and how to communicate what you actually want to build. So you're still learning, but it's more about giving good instructions than mastering a whole programming language. But once you're actually building, control does become a big factor. With traditional coding, you have full control over every little part of the process. For example, you can fine tune algorithms, you can choose the most efficient data structures, and you can build what it is that you exactly pictured. And if something breaks, you can also debug it step by step. You can set breakpoints and you can see exactly where things went wrong. With vibe coding, it's a bit different. You're working within the limits of what the AI can actually understand and what it can generate based on your prompts. So when something doesn't work as expected, fixing it usually means rephrasing your instructions or sometimes even just starting from scratch rather than going in and tweaking the code yourself. And this lack of control also affects performance, especially as your app grows. Because with traditional coding, you can fine tune things for your specific use case. You get to pick the most efficient algorithms, you get to manage resources carefully, and build something that scales smoothly. But alternatively, with vibe coding, performance really comes down to whatever the AI chooses to generate. So while it might work just fine for smaller projects, it may not be fully optimized, and that can become a big challenge as things get more and more complex. And beyond all this technical stuff, there's also just costs to think about, especially over time. Traditional coding takes the bigger upfront investment. You're spending months, maybe years learning how to code, but once you have those skills, your ongoing costs are usually pretty low. But vibe coding sort of flips that. The barrier to entry is much lower since you can just start building right away, but there's a trade-off and that's that you'll likely be paying for these AI tools or platform subscriptions on a regular basis and those costs can actually add up if you're using them long term. So what does this all mean if you're an entrepreneur? For one, it means that you can move way faster. Vibe coding excels for prototypes, personal projects, small business tools, and learning experiences. But on the other hand, traditional coding remains essential for enterprise applications, complex systems that require custom architecture, and situations where you just need precise control over performance and security. Now, all that in mind, if you are planning to kick off a project, but you're still sort of scratching your head going, wait, what is this vibe coding again? Well, this is where platforms like Fiverr can really come in handy. Because once you've built the first version, you very well might hit a point where you need a little extra polish. Maybe some stronger security or even more complex integrations. So that's where experienced developers on Fiverr can step in as they know how to take this AI generated code and turn it into something that's actually ready to be used. Now, if you want your vibe coding to be a success, let's get into what happens after you built an app with it. Because with vibe coding, building an app is only part of the process. The next and arguably most important thing to consider is whether people actually want to use it. The first thing you want to focus on is whether your app actually solves a real problem. So share it with potential users, get feedback, and make improvements based on what you hear. And keep in mind, that since vibe coding moves quickly, this whole build, test, adjust cycle happens a lot faster than it ever would with traditional development. So once you've made sure that people actually want what you've built, the next challenge is going to be getting it in front of your target audience. And a good way to do this is to start by simply documenting your building process and sharing that learning journey online. People love the behind the scenes content about, well, sort of everything, but especially AI assisted development. This means you can use social media to your advantage by figuring out where your target audience is and then creating some cool, valuable content around your product's niche. If you built a productivity tool, share tips that help people stay organized. If it's a game, post clips or join conversations in gaming communities. Being open about your process helps people connect with your product and gives them a reason to sort of follow along. As your project starts to gain traction, 
it's worth thinking about how to scale it properly. That could mean improving the code, it could mean tidying up security, adding more advanced features, or connecting it with other systems. And Fiverr can help with all of that. You can find developers to turn your web app into an iOS and Android version, designers to level up your UI and make it more user-friendly, or specialists to optimize your database and improve performance as more users actually come in. You can also get help in shaping a solid marketing strategy to support the growth of your product. Okay, so vibe coding is a new way to build real working applications by describing what you want in plain language. It's already being used by startups and 25% of Y Combinator's latest batch built most of their code in this way. These tools are easy to access, the learning curve is lighter than traditional coding, and it's never been easier to turn an idea into something real. But building the app is only the first step. Long-term success comes from solving real problems and connecting with the right audience. If you're ready to see what you can build with vibe coding, now truly is a great time to start. And if you ever need support in your endeavors, Fiverr has developers who work with both traditional code and AI tools so you're not building alone. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, or drop a comment with your thoughts. We're always sharing new videos like this, and we hope to see you in the next.